Hello everyone, thanks for attending our workshop today on the knowledge base and how you can use it and what it can do for you and your organization. Uh, so we're gonna give another minute or so here for people to jump on. Looks like we've got some folks on that are, haven't been to some of these before, a few that have been to uh, quite a number of them. So uh, thank you for coming for the newcomers. I think hopefully you'll find this engaging and, and exciting and um, it'll help you in your day-to-day -day use of uh, Crocanian products. And uh, just a quick note, I am not sharing my screen yet, so I uh, not you're not seeing, you're just going to see the go to webinar information. I will share my screen shortly and we'll get right into it. Uh, when I do these workshops, I like to just really get into the material. I don't want to have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, fluff of, uh, you know, at the beginning. Um, so we really just want to get into it. But I do want to give a, another minute or two for people to show up who uh, might be waiting to click the button. And it looks like I've got a couple more popping in now, and yeah, we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, okay, great. So th again, thanks for everyone for joining today. My name is James Restivo with Crow Canyon Software. Uh, if you've been to these before, you've heard me say it a million times, but there's a questions box in the GoToWebinar panel for you to ask any questions as we go through the uh, workshop today. Uh, feel free to pop a question, comment in there at any point in time. Uh, if you have um, anything to, to say, we'll keep an eye on that. We also have uh, my father, Scott, on the call as well, the CEO of Crow Canyon. And we also have uh, Dana Brooks on the call, a newcomer to Crow Canyon who uh, is uh, helping out today with the workshop. So if you have any questions, pop in there one, then we'll get you an answer as soon as possible. And we can also bring it up on the call today. So what I want to talk about first is what is a knowledge base? So you're probably mostly pretty aware of it, but just to reiterate, a knowledge base is a repository of information that is helpful for you or your customers in their use of the, uh, you know, in, in your organization. So maybe it's information about how to change your benefits through HR. Maybe it's information on how to update your tax information with payroll. Maybe it's information on how to fix you know, common problems with computers. How do you reset your password? All these types of things need to have a, be stored in a repository somewhere. And there might be different KBs for different scenarios. Uh, what we're gonna look at today is a knowledge base that is specific to the IT world, but this concept can certainly be applied to any type of, uh, you know, any type of uh, department in your organization. Like I said, HR might have their own knowledge base. IT will have its own knowledge base. Finance might have its own knowledge base about financial systems, you know, things like that. So there's going to be a repository of information that you want to uh, have accessible to your users. Now, how is that accessed? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. And what I'm going to show you today is how it is accessed through our IT help desk in our uh, uh, program. And so it's going to be kind of an IT focused one and I'll show you the various ways you can get to it and how you use it within, within our help desk application. And so with that, I am going to share my screen and just make sure sharing the correct one here. Yeah, so you should be seeing the IT Help Desk portal. And this is what we roll out with our Help Desk. So if you have our Help Desk pro program, you have something like this or similar looking to this already. Uh, so then this is going to, so, uh, so this is going to um, probably look close to what you already have. And you'll notice if you, there's a knowledge base link on here. So this is how our end users who are accessing this portal and submitting tickets can get access to the knowledge base. They'll have a link right here on the portal, click through that, and that's going to bring up the knowledge base page like you see on the screen right now. And they'll have the ability to search through and see what, see if an article helps them. So we can look for something like uh, you know, blue screen which doesn't really happen that much with Microsoft anymore, which is kind of a nice thing. They, they sort of got rid of that whole blue screen of death <laughs> situation. I think they figured, finally figured out how to get rid of it. But in case it still happens, you have it there, or you know, printing problems are kind of a, a common thing. And essentially, the user can come in here and type, you know, my printer has a problem, and that's going to bring up something. My printer has a problem. <clears throat> and that's going to bring up a knowledge base article. Now they can bring up this article by clicking on it, and they can see the information of how to troubleshoot issues with printing on a Windows PC. So here's the information and stored like this. And there's a way to connect it to a category and issue type. And you can, uh, you know, that, that, that way you can kind of categorize your knowledge base articles as to what they're related to. 
Now, one use of that for the category in issue type piece is that you can connect this to an actual ticket. And if you don't have this in your current help desk implementation, I'll kind of walk through how this is set up so you might be able to, to get a look at it. But in the submit new ticket form, you have, it, when you select your category and your issue type here, so let's do hardware problem and let's say desktop, you'll notice that these two links pop up below here. So that is actually pulling information from the knowledge base and because we know most users are going to go directly to the ticket, they're not, you know, if they're, if they're not forced to go through the knowledge base, they're probably not necessarily going to do it. But this kind of gives a way to sort of uh, force them to see, hey, look, there are resources here for the problem that you're trying to submit. It might encourage them to go self-serve and get that resolution to the problem without having to submit an actual ticket into the system. So we do have that option they can put on here. We could tie this to category. We could tie this to other fields on the form. It doesn't just have to be tied to issue type. And just to real quickly just kind of show you how that's set up, it's, it's basically just a cascaded lookup field. So if you're familiar with Nitro and, and Nitro Forms, uh, I'm going to pull up this, uh, this form here. You'll see it's a cascaded lookup, which is pretty straightforward to set up. So I'll just walk through that real quick. Now I'll show you on the portal form, even though it's there on both the uh, the portal form and the backend form in our help desk. You'll see that's actually a field here, and it's not going to show unless you have something in it. We've hidden the title, over, you know, over, click the override display name so it doesn't even show. And then uh, for the settings, we're essentially, you know, we give it a name. It doesn't really matter what the name is because that's not going to show. We can, uh, you know, show what form we want to pull up, and that's going to be the portal form because we're in the portal uh, uh, ticket. And you can tie it to issue type. So basically, we're just cascading off that category issue type connection that you have in the back end already and presenting articles related to that issue type, uh, you know, category issue type combination to the end user so that they can try to resolve their problem without submitting that ticket. So that's that's how that's set up. So if you don't have that set up on your side and you want to get that going, that this is the way you do it. You do cascaded lookup, and that's going to let you uh, uh, you know, let you show the user the articles that they're they're actually trying to look for. Uh, so, so yeah, so that that's um, you know that's basically how the users would get access to it. And but you also have might have articles for your staff, right? So you want, you're going to have articles there for your end users to self serve, but you also might have articles for your staff, like how to back up and reimage a server. End users not necessarily going to need to know how to do that but your IT staff might. You know, different things like that, how to use certain systems, how to manage certain processes, those knowledge articles, those that information needs to be there for them to access. So we do also have a knowledge base link in our back end. And you can see there's a bunch of articles in there. And the same experience as the end user gets, they can come in here and type in what they want to type in. So, uh, you know, BitLocker it might be a problem, have a problem, BitLocker issue. And they can pull, type in that search term and come back uh, with articles or not, I guess. Just do BitLocker, I think that's going to come up with something. And it does, it comes up with a couple uh, items there for them to to look at so they can see what, uh, how to, you know, how to do this. Like, and there's an article here, it's got the information, they can see it, and it's got that category issue type connection, same as what we saw on the um, on the other uh, the, uh, the the front end for the end users. So you got that search, and search is a big part of it because how do you you know categorization of your KB articles is important because you want to make sure they're in the right category, they're related to the correct issue. That way, users know what it's referring to. Uh, as you might have an article that speaks a little more generically, but you you're, it's specifically about an issue. That's where the categorization comes into play. It makes makes a lot of sense and really gives you a way to drive what is uh, you know, how those articles are organized in your back end. So you need that metadata on there to really help organize what your knowledge base is uh, is doing and, and how it's organized. And you can see back on the main search page here, let's get back to that real quick. You can also see articles by category. So instead of searching up here at the top or looking through the frequently used ones, the users can go directly to the uh, category that they want to look up and see what articles are available for them so you can just kind of search through it. So that's there uh, today. I think I believe it is there on the knowledge base here as well. Yeah, yeah, they can search by category down here. So 
That's um, another way user can interact with this, a kind of more modern way to do it is through a bot. And so we have a bot for Microsoft Teams that allows you to uh, have your users not only submit tickets through Teams, but also to, uh, they could search a knowledge base article. So kind of primed it here, I might have timed out, so I'm just gonna go to command, see if commands will work. So you type in your commands, it brings up all the list of commands. So this is all set up through the bot interface. There's, we've done a number of workshops on the bot. That's a separate discussion. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, certainly feel free to reach out to us. But uh, if we wanted to do a search here, we do have a search KB articles link, and then we can enter a search term. So in this case, we can do uh, our, you know, printer won't, won't work. All right, and that's going to bring up, you know, it's going to go search that knowledge base, and it's going to bring back a couple of articles, and then it comes back with a, a couple of options for the end user to, uh, to, you know, enter more detail. They can go and submit a ticket. They can say that their problem was resolved, or they could start over from, from scratch, but that gives you a way to also search KB articles from another type of interface. So kind of, kind of this omni-channel support sort of scenario where they could uh, do it through the portal, and they, or they could do it through the bot, or you could have a web page that has this information on there as well for people to access. Um, you know, if they're emailing tickets in, of course, there's no way to kind of intercept that email and give them knowledge based articles, but there are ways that we can attach knowledge based articles to tickets, which I'll show you, and those can be uh, then shared with, with end users. Uh, on the articles themselves, uh, actually, before I get into that, let me show you on the ticket form. So, similar to the, the portal ticket form, we do have the same functionality on the backend ticket form to pull up an knowledge base articles. And that could be useful for your technicians if they're creating a ticket this way to see, okay, what's already available for, that I can send to the end user. So I got a hardware problem, it's a desktop, you know, won't load or something, or my PC crashes. You know, they can go and pull that open and see what it's all about. They could actually even copy and, and paste and send this text over to the, uh, the end user if they wanted to, but you see there's information here about that article. And then they can also connect it over here. So we have this a connection over here. We can actually set up something to limit what articles are shown here. If you have a lot of knowledge base articles, we can limit this in a similar way that we're limiting things over here with just these two options showing up. We can, in a kind of similar way, this is a lookup column that can be cascaded to also only show articles for a particular category or issue type. And we can come in here and uh, see which, uh, which one it is. Let's see, it's hardware problem. Desktop, I just have to search for it, but yeah, this one. So we can actually connect it now in, in to the ticket. So now I've got this connection between the, the IT help desk ticket and the knowledge base article, and that kind of helps you see how they're connected to each other. Uh, so let's see, let me pull up one that I've already connected or that I've already created. So we got this ticket over here. We know it's got a knowledge base article related to it, kind of similar, you know, the troubleshooting options that we have here. And then through the edit form, we can actually go to the knowledge base tab and find that one that we were looking at. Again, like I said, we could set up a way to limit this, but uh, you get that link there and you save it. Now you can go, when you look at the display form, you'll see that it is connected. Like so. Now you may have situations in working through these tickets that there is no knowledge base related to it. So, like let's say, um, you know, take this ticket here. Go to meeting. You know, won't open. We don't have a specific category and issue type for this one. So what we can do is go come in here and take a look at it, and you can see there's no there. There are a couple knowledge base articles, but they aren't, you know, they aren't related to this problem. They aren't. They might be useful for certain situations, but you don't have anything for this. So this gives you a way to kind of check to see, do we have a knowledge base article? Do we need to create a knowledge base article for this? And through these types of tickets that don't have, where you, you can see there's you know, either related knowledge base articles that aren't uh, relevant to the situation, or there are just simply aren't any knowledge base articles related to it, you can actually create a knowledge base article from the ticket. And you can do that by going to knowledge base, and click this create KB article. So you see this button here, create KB article, that's gonna be on your knowledge base tab. So if you, <clears throat> you know, if you have that on your ticket form, you can click that. And then once you close your ticket, 
and we can make a resolution here. Um, you know, uh, let's see, problem had to reinstall, go to meeting. So that's that's our resolution. That's the, you know, the problem. And we're going to mark it as closed. Oh, I got that. <laughs> All right, mark it as resolved. And then uh, I'll just make a quick change to allow me to close it. So again, it's a, here's another insight. If you are uh, not able to close your tickets, or you want your staff to be able to close tickets, there's a validation on your request status that you can simply remove. All right, and publish that. So just like that, we can get rid of that, that block and then we can uh, close that ticket. So let me refresh this and let me actually go and clear the cache. Apologize, I didn't have this fixed up ahead of the call, but I'll just go ahead and fix this real quick. All right, reset, okay. Good refresh here. All right, now I can come back into this and hit edit. We could also go into the display form and click the close. There's also a close button on the display form, but I'll just come in here and close this like this, closed. All right, now it's allowing me to do it. That's great. Okay, now, so part of that closing of it, it's going to go and create a knowledge base article. So where do we see those? All right, well, from the back end, it's a little it's a little bit of a workaround, but you do have to go through site contents and get over to the knowledge base right here. And you pull up your knowledge base list. So now you can, you know, just create it from a ticket, but now you have to add some more kind of maybe a little more to it. Like you don't have a lot of information there yet. Uh let's see, where is it? And I probably should have tested to make sure this would work before. <laughs> uh, I thought it would create it, but um, it should it should go ahead. It should create that, and uh, it, and if that's not set up, it's probably something in workflows. I'm not going to troubleshoot it with, on the call, but essentially, once you get it created, it's just going to create a line item here, like these other ones that, have our, that are already on here. We can go ahead and uh, uh, edit any one of these articles to uh, to adjust, adjust the information that's in there. Maybe it's an update to the information that is you know is needed. It's out of date information. We want to make an update. We can simply go here to edit form, and you see you can you can update the text on the, the content. So that's going to allow you to uh, to update the information and get the, uh, you know, get it relevant for the user so that it's not out of date anymore. So one of the things, while we're on this form, a couple other things I want to point out on here are there's a target audience field. Now again, out of the box, we don't have anything around this, but we can create a couple simple workflows, which I'll show you in, in just a few minutes on how you can use that target audience to control who sees these knowledge base articles. Uh, it's a very simple workflow, just managing permissions on these items and changing what, um, uh, just showing what, it, it, if it's external, it can be available to everyone because the internal staff might need to see it too, and ex, and external meaning your customers who are accessing the portal. And then your uh, internal would just be to the IT staff. That's going to break inheritance and keep it just for the IT staff and wouldn't be accessible or, or searchable from the portal. Um, and then you'll see resolution and resolution nodes. So those two fields would pop in from the ticket as well. So you remember I created that resolution as a problem and then I created the, uh, the resolution nodes for that. We had to reinstall it. Well, now we can put that information in here and then we can come up here to, uh, you know, that's going to map over and then we can come up here to modify uh, and add more details. So we can create our knowledge base article and it essentially just gives you a placeholder in, in a sense to when you create it from the ticket, it gives you a placeholder to know, okay, we didn't have a resolution for that. We didn't have an article for that. Now we do. Now we need to go and uh, make it spruce it up, make it look nice, maybe add some pictures and styling to it if you want. But that's, um, you know, at least gives you a point of reference to say, okay, we didn't have it. Now we have it. Now we can make it better. So that's uh, one way to create it is through through the uh, the ticket. So another way, I mean, obviously, you just come straight to this list and go and create it uh, from you know the new link right here. And there's also a new new KB article link over here that you can uh, go and create a new one. 
you can see it's got the um, all the same information we were just looking at right here. So there you go. And then you also notice there's a show and frequently used KB articles button or uh, checkbox that's going to determine whether it shows up in that in this top part here, this frequently used articles. So sort of a, a bit of a misnomer, I guess, sort of a back end way to do it where you're, uh, you're, you're directly saying it should be a frequently used article versus actually being a frequently used article. Um, but that that's okay. I mean, you sometimes have to kind of guide the users or kind of hold their hand to the right resolution. And, you know, if it's a com you know, something that's coming up more frequently that you wanted to, maybe the article even hasn't been referenced all that much, you just created it, but you want to make it visible and kind of apparent to the user that there is information out there about it, you can put it in the frequently used articles. So it kind of gives you a way to escalate that, th those particular knowledge issues or you know uh, problems that have a resolution that people may not be aware of. So, and then another a third way you could create knowledge-based articles if you really wanted to do it is to, you could export from Excel, like kind of, uh, we have this export to Excel tool where you basically have the fields and you map them in and then it puts it up there. Of course, that kind of limits you on what you can do with the wiki content with uh, the images and whatnot, and that might, might not translate with that tool. Um, but a third way, you could, you know, uh, I guess a fourth way you could create these is just to copy and paste like a Word doc and put it into the wiki content. And that should bring over your images and things pretty pretty easily to into this here, or you could just go through and replace the images with the correct, um, you know, if the, they don't come across for whatever reason. So a couple different ways you can do that. And then, so that, that's how you create it. And then uh, we also get the question, you know, why do we use this instead of a, a, a you know, document? Well, it, it's a little, it's kind of, maybe six one, six one half dozen the other. This is a great way to do it for searchability. It's a great way to do it for, because we got the metadata on there. Uh, and, you know, if you wanted to create a repository, like a document library where you upload documents or it could be Excel files or Word docs, you could do that too. And uh, we could probably point the searching capability over to that that library if we wanted to, but there's, you're not gonna get that automatic creation. So sort of a, a you know, in our back of our minds, we've got some things we're thinking about on how to improve this. And, and one of those is like, okay, how can we incorporate documents more into this uh, versus this? But this is the way it is today with the wiki content and the, um, you know, this one particular list and how you do it. Uh, so let's see. So the other thing I wanted to show you uh, is the workflow to set the permissions. So again, this is something you probably don't have out of the box. It maybe has been set up for you. But if you don't have it set up and you want to get it set up, it's really simple to create a workflow to manage the permissions based on the target audience field. So again, we're saying external users, you know, if it's marked external, well, everyone can see it because you want external users to see it and you want your internal IT staff to see it. So you're going to make it available for everyone and that's fine. Internal staff though, you want to make sure only your internal staff see it. So we want to break inheritance and have that specific to your staff. And we can do that by going to the application admin, go to workflows. Uh, let's pop over there real quick. And yeah, so create a couple here. So you have to basically do two, set permissions on create. So when it gets added to your system, how do you set the permissions? Of course, in the course of events, you might want to create an article and not have it searchable from the end users, in which case it would only be available for your internal staff to start. And then we wanna make it available for the end users. So we wanna have a modify option as well. So when we create it, we can simply look at that field of external versus internal, and we're going to uh, you know, either set permissions on it if it's internal or just leave it alone if it's external, right? So we've got this, you know, based on what the target audience is, we're either gonna go the internal route or the external route. And that's going to, uh, you know, external is just basically not going to do anything. So it's going to check, is it for external staff or external users? Great, we're not going to change the permissions. Is it for internal users? Okay, let's set the permissions so that they are, you know, removing users. So I'm removing a, a group of users, in this case, Nitro Workshops visitors, in which case this would be uh, your, your end users group. Whatever your end users group, if there's multiple end users groups as well, you might want to, do, you, you'll add those in here. But essentially, you're basically removing the permissions for those people to see this because it's marked as an internal document only. 
and then the you know if we wanted to adjust those permissions on the the modify we have this uh, set permissions on modify option where we can you know then then we decide okay is it external well now we have to you know, if it, if it was internal, then we can mark it as external and uh, delete unique permissions, which basically re-inherits the permissions and makes it available for, for everyone. And then, it, you know, we'll do basically do the same thing here that we were doing before, which is removing the user permissions for the end user group if it's changed to the internal. And we've got some conditions on here, say, you know, after change, you know, if it's changed to either one of those, you know, some, something changes, then we need to run this workflow. So that's how you can set it for your end users versus your staff use just a couple really simple workflows and if you need those if you, you don't have those set up uh, in place on your side right now uh, you, these should work i can actually just export these files and if you're interested i can share them with you because it's really just a json file that gets exported out and it should work because your knowledge base schema essentially the, the columns available on your knowledge base and in, in your system should match up with this one if you're using the it help desk so we can send, definitely send those along to, to people who request them. I'll just package them up in zip and, and get them over to uh, anyone who's interested. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of where we're at with the knowledge base and where it is living today as far as a repository of information that your end users can access, that your staff could access, and we can kind of control who sees which, which grouping of those knowledge base articles. Uh, so you know a couple of different ways you can create it and how you get that in there but it's really important you know just kind of re reiterate you know the knowledge base is important for your uh knowledge retention and, you know because you might have a process or a, a program or something that only a few people know how to use they you know leave the company get restructured something happens you, you know, retire that you want the, that information to retain in the company and that's where the knowledge base really comes into play and really has its its power is that you're you're creating this retention of knowledge for your system, whether that's in the IT help desk, could be elsewhere. Uh, it, it is something that's really important to to retain. Um, but yeah, so this is how we're doing it. It's how people can search it, but we do have uh, our eyes on the on the future of what we can do to improve this. Uh, it, there there are certainly things we can do. You might have noticed there is a ratings article on the uh, the knowledge base uh, ticket. Let's see if I can go over here. Actually, I saw on the back on the front end, but we do have a ratings section, which is a little clunky at, at the current moment, so I didn't really want to touch on it too much. But we're going to be uh, really enhancing this more, and, and we're, we're kind of going through this project of, of you know, it kind of gives you a little insight of what we're doing with the IT help desk. We're going to be improving what you can do with the knowledge base, and I'll show you on one form here just kind of what it looks like. We're going to have more interactivity with the end users as far as uh, what they can do to rate it. Uh, I guess it's on the portal form here. So let me go over to portal. Oops, IT professional. All right, Daniel, help me out. What was the, what did we set the, the, the portal? To? Um, let me pull it up for you right now. It's, it's IT. IT portal 22, right? I see four. Yeah, you too. just get rid of the. Um... There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Um, you'll see over here. It's going to look. You know, we're going to be making additional changes. Right now, it kind of looks base, basically what we have today. But you notice on the form itself, though, we're going to add in this kind of ratings capability. So when they bring up the article and actually view it, the end user will have a choice to either say the article resolved their problem, that could increase the rating of the article. There's a feedback option actually they are going to have in place here for reading the article and how helpful was it. They can put some comments and we're going to have a way to, you know, to see those comments. And that's going to be on the back end side of things, I believe, where we have, um, you know, duplicate this. This is kind of a, a, our test site for building things out. So there might be some things you, you see on here that you don't have yet, but that's, uh, you yeah, know, we're, we're working on stuff. Um, okay. I, there, I thought the there was anything. actually disappeared <laughs> today. So I'm oh, bringing okay. it. Yep. You're All good. Right, thanks. 
All right. So yeah, the other part is yeah. Anyway, we didn't we didn't dig into that one before this call, but the um, <laughs> essentially yeah, the, uh, 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 the there's going to be a tab there. Show the user feedback, and you're going to be able to see all right how many users actually rated this article. Is it useful or not? They'll give you a lot more insight as as to you know kind of more telemetry as is this knowledge based article actually helpful or not? Is it well, solving any problems? Not yeah. to interrupt, but if you went to that and clicked that button that said yes, this solved my problem, you'll see the feedback form. That you know, in the current state, we can improve it, but it's yeah, in the, the portal. portal. Gonna be in the portal. Yeah, if you actually say I still need to submit a ticket, it will um, pull up a oh, it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah. The okay. if the article resolves okay. your problem, it'll actually let you know in the list view um, by adding a ticker mark, like a counter on how many uh, incidences that um, it was solved. So. Right. Right, so you're here. And, and again, this is work in progress. So this is sort of just like, you know, a little, you know, behind the scenes, this is what we're working on. Really just for you guys who come to these workshops, uh, frequently you get to see this kind of stuff. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, we don't show just ever anyone this stuff. Um, but you get the rating score, you get the additional feedback. That's going to be stored as a related item to the, the article. And that, that'll give you more metrics, more telemetry, more information about what, you know, what's helpful, what's not from your system. And you can see once they, they can submit feedback whether they submit feedback or not it's going to bring them over to the uh, the form uh, and they can submit their ticket so that is some improvements and, and we're going to be working on a few other things uh, with this we're just sort of in the nascent phase of, of this knowledge based redevelop um, redevelopment I guess you could say uh, but yeah kind of want to show you what you have today and kind of where we're going with it but um, let's see was there any questions that we wanted to bring up in the meeting yeah yeah, there were a few, but I also wanted to make a point about natural language processing being used in the search of the of the knowledge base that you can use not natural language processing uh, to parse out what the user's typing in, so you can match keywords instead of like the you know my printer is broken, my printer is not working. It'll pull out the keywords like printer not working, but not all the other fluff around it that is irrelevant, and that's a very important part of using natural language processing. And uh, James, you're giving a workshop, I think it's three, on February 9th, I think two weeks, on using mm -hmm. AI services inside of Nitro Studio and natural language processing is part of that. With the Lewis yeah. application, language understanding, LU, you know, language understanding, Lewis, they call it Lewis up there in Azure Cognitive Services, and mm -hmm. how to implement all that. So that would be a really good workshop in two weeks to go into more detail about how to do that. But yep. the, the search you were doing in the portal did use, should be used in natural language processing. Also, there is the modern UI web part for knowledge-based search we have that if you do put that on a dashboard, it's kind of like similar to what you're seeing in the portal, same idea, but it you know it doesn't have to be in the portal, it can just be on a dashboard page and mm -hmm. it does the same thing. It uses the natural language processing capabilities to bring it back to those articles. So it's it's really got a lot of a lot of room, uh, a lot of capabilities, and we're looking, like James is saying, to improve it because we, you know, f we we didn't pay too much attention to. We kind of built it some years ago, and then we didn't hear too much about. It, but lately, people have been really asking more about it, especially in relation to our bot, because the bot, of course, is only as effective as the knowledge base behind it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a twofold kind of work there, the bot's getting better, the knowledge base is getting better, therefore self-service for your uh, employees and users will get better. But as far as questions, you want uh, uh, there were a few you want to take a look at, I, I answered some of them, but you might want to address them anyway during this uh, webinar, a workshop. Yeah, uh, sure, yeah. So is there a way to automatically embed the article or link to the article in the work log so the ticket gets expedited as far as documentation is concerned? Um, yeah, so you, you had an answer on that one. Right, 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 right. And part of it also is that there is the um, capability to send out the article to the end user. So, you know, either from the article itself, you can open it up and then email it. That's just a custom action button at the top that emails it. Or if you're in a ticket, we have a way to say, send an email and include the KB article. It's just a matter of configuring the mail template correctly for the custom action mail template. Right. That says include this KB article in it. It's a little... We'll show you how to do that if you're interested. But uh, so that's therefore you're communicating with the end user. The article goes back to that person, the end user, as a way of resolving the problem. If they didn't bother to look it up themselves, you can say, well, here, here's the article on how to fix it. You know, go read it. 
I mean, if you're specifically interested in that, let's let's set up another call uh, for just those individuals who might be interested in setting that up. We can walk through how we set it up. And then, because uh, again, that's not something we have out of the box, but it's something that we can set up on, um, you know, we have set up our, in our demo site and we can show you how that, so how that is. So if you're interested, pop in, you know, pop that note into the questions box and we can set up a separate call with you, kind of show you what that looks like from our side and you can kind of mirror our configurations and get them going on on your end. Uh, and of course, if you want us to do it for you, you've got some professional services, we, we can look at doing that, but um, we can have a quick meeting probably on Friday to to show you what that looks like. Sure. Good. Uh, good. So do that. Good. Another question also, if you see that one, James. Uh, the new one that came in? Yes. How does it take a bit? Yeah. So question is, uh, how much time does it take to build up a base level knowledge base? And this is a really great question, a really important question, because it is something that does take time and effort and some uh, you know, thought behind what articles are going to be relevant and what are users going to, to react to and respond to as far as what articles are available. Uh, it, it's a really tough question to answer because it really depends on your specific uh, organization's needs, how uh, some users are really tech savvy and they don't need a lot of help. So other users are very tech not savvy and need a lot of hand holding. So there might be a different level of, uh, you know, different level of need there, a different level of time that we're talking about to build up a base level. Now, what I was mentioning with the copy and paste earlier, with how you build these articles, if you have a repository already, that gets you a long ways there. Is you really just have to copy and paste it. It does still take time, but you just have to copy and paste the information into the knowledge base, and then you have it there as a repository. Uh, so <clears throat> that, that is a possibility there. But it does it does take some time. It does take some time to set out, and, and you know every organization is a little different. Like I said, there are specific programs that people are using, maybe customized programs that people are using that aren't relevant to other organizations that you need knowledge on. Uh, so there, there's a lot of... Uh, you know, a lot of ways that could go with, with how you build that up. Um, but it does take time. I mean, if you dedicate some hours to it, it could take, uh, uh, you know, you, you know, at least get a base level. It might take a couple of weeks to kind of throw things together. And then, you know, as these tickets come in, as you realize there's articles needed for them, you can mark them as, you know, create the KB article, close the ticket. That's going to create that uh, that record in your knowledge base list that then you you can then go and uh, augment that information for your end users to respond to. Uh, so that is uh, another way to do it. And that would just build up over time, right? So kind of maybe catch those edge cases that you might not have thought of, but really, you know, for building it up, you'd really want to focus on what are the most common things that are coming through. You can, and you can get that information through some telemetry on the, uh, the, on the, the IT site itself. Uh, if I go to our, um, let me go to our demo site because I know we have a ton of stuff there. Uh, let's give me a second there. Yeah, to build the actual system, build the put the system in place, it's very simple. And to, like Daniel was saying, you could put maybe ten or twenty articles in pretty quickly, which could give you a base. I think mm -hmm. what James is more referring to refining it and growing it. Well, that takes time as you go through uh, your yeah. experience with the help desk and the tickets that come in, and it also changes over time because you know get new systems in Windows 10, Windows 11. A new a new soft piece of software that needs to have different articles, but it, it, the thing is our system can grow and evolve quite nicely, and uh, right. it's related to the tickets, so you can see what tickets you're getting uh, most commonly, and then use yeah. those to build your knowledge. Same with the bot. The bot is analytics also. If you use the bot to say what are what questions were not answered, and then yeah, able yeah, spot telemetry. That's right. Yeah, the bot telemetry too. So it's a combination of experience ongoing interactivity with the help desk or the bot gives you a great basis to build it up. Yep. The only thing is if you don't get going, it never gets going though, right? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you don't get started, you know? If you don't buy a ticket, you can't win the lottery kind of thing, right? That's kind of, you exactly. Don't play, you can't win, you know? So it's important yeah. we encourage people to get going, get that information in there, and lo and behold, three to six months down the road, you got a pretty good uh, establishment of, it kind of settles into a nice amount of articles. Yeah, I want, I want to show you some of the telemetry here, and uh, you have this open tickets by category priority, but we could, we could easily change that to be all tickets by category priority, so you can see how many tickets are coming in for each of these types of, of issues. Are they high priority or not? Are they, are they marked as high priority, low priority, whatever it might be? Um, but you have that, that kind of telemetry you can pull out of the system with our reporting tool to see kind of where you need to spend your time and, and efforts to shore up what, what the knowledge base has in it. 
And that yeah, is drill down in, in it too, doesn't it? it? It can put drill down in reports. I don't know if this particular report does, but you could click and see those four tickets if you. Yeah, this one doesn't have it uh, enabled, but um, yeah, it's yeah. a simple, it's a simple setting. Just yeah, it's say just a checkbox in the report. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so you can drill down, look at those. Do, do they require like look, look, a yeah, ton of hardware requests? Okay, maybe we need to have a, a separate process for this, or maybe it, its own little, little little kind of hardware request form kind of thing. You know, whatever you need to do. Networking issues. Okay, it looks like we got a number of networking issues over the last. You know, you can time box this too and put it around last month, last week, last year, wherever you want it to be. We can do that in live time with the filters. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, cool. I can do, yeah, I can do live filters right here. Just say, okay, show me. Yeah, last month. Uh, you know, uh, let's see, created. You know how many were created last? Probably not many in our demo site because I think we created a lot of these early. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, but you got a few. You can see there's okay, there's a few issues that came in. But yeah, that's basically what 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 that's all about. And that, like I said, that gives you an insight as to where are people tripping up, where do they need help, and that's where you can kind of focus your efforts on what knowledge based articles to provide to them. All right, all yeah, right. Good system. You got me convinced, James. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good, 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 good. Um, okay, great. So let's see if there's any other questions. Looks like. Um, you know, I addressed the question about internal versus external with the workflows, uh, and and yeah, again, if you're interested in that, put that into the questions box so I can uh, make sure I know who to who to send these to. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that that's about it. So you can get a sense of where we are, where we're going, and how knowledge base can be useful, and know what you know, and, and uh, get that, you know, uh, get that going yeah. for your users, and and you know, help take those. Really, it's all about helping take the load off your IT staff, so they don't have to keep that's right. answering the same answer. question over and over <laughs> again. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, and we use it in our in our in our whole system too, so helpful. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess in that that note, in that vein, we can talk. We can go over to our uh, uh, help site. So, this is our you know kind of our our KB for for end users. Um, you got this over here. Uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you, you know, on this call, I'm sure you're familiar with it. I've seen your names pop into the forum and and whatnot, but you um you have the uh the, the, the same thing you got a search bar right here You're like how do i how do i install something rather you can do that bot or something yeah he's got the information stuff to install nitro bot so yeah here's our knowledge base for you, you guys to use uh, so kind of same vein that that we have so you know feel free to use this in a community forum feel free to come in and participate in the forum if you have any questions that you do want to put out there uh you can uh, you can put them in in the forum and uh yeah i think that you know, actually you know thinking about it, i might i might put those uh, those two files i was talking about for the workflows in the forum it might be a good good place for people to, to look for them yep. we'll have to, anyway i'll send you directly also the people who asked I, I will i will do that but i might also post them up here just another place to put them but um yeah i think that's, that's about it great thanks james right. and we welcome anyone's feedback if they you know want to see some features in it or everything and uh or in the help desk in general, any feedback like that is very useful for us. So always feel free to send an email to James or me or, you know, to what's a good address, James? Uh, James, I guess, james.restivo at crocana.com. Yep. Yeah, send it on over to me. We should have one called feedback at crocana.com. I got to put that address together. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah, we, yeah, we should. We should have right. that one. All right. Well, very good. Thanks, everyone, for joining today and appreciate it. And uh, have a great rest of your day. And we'll talk to you, um, well, probably talk to you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> All right. If not sooner. All right. Take care. Okay. Thanks.